Yeah, well, it's uh, taken everyone by surprise somewhat. Of course, we had the coronavirus pandemic and we saw a number of industries uh, such as the automakers, of course, stop production for a little while. Meanwhile, there was a huge surge in things like uh, PCs, in uh, video games, consoles, smartphones uh, as well. And so a lot of the chip manufacturers around the world were focusing on these kind of technologies and perhaps putting some of these other industries towards the bottom of the pile. So that's where we're at right now. But you mentioned that supply chain review. I think one part of that is certainly looking at the chip shortage, but there's a bigger thing going on in the background here, and that really is about the U.S. looking to try to regain some sort of leadership in the manufacturing of chips. A lot of that over the past sort of uh, de a decade and a half has shifted over to Asia, uh, in particular to TSMC over in Taiwan, and increasingly more so to uh, Samsung Electronics uh, as well. If we look at South Korea and Taiwan, collectively they count for about somewhere in the region of 70% plus of the chip manufacturing market and you and the US whilst once a leader via Intel has really lost some of that edge so you've seen that big announcement from Intel in terms of investing into manufacturing the US is trying to get TSMC on board over in the US as well really trying to onshore some of that manufacturing in order to perhaps insulate it to some extent Mandy to, from some of these geopolitical tensions as well. Yeah, so where exactly does, does this leave China, considering that China also wants to develop next generation chip technology to be able to compete with the big boys like Intel and TSMC? The difficulty for China at the moment, Mandy, is really from the fact that the supply chain is very much controlled by a small number of companies when it comes to the tools required to do the advanced manufacturing that TSMC and Samsung do. For example, if we look at some of the what they, uh, the, the semi-cap companies, these are the companies that create the tools in order to facilitate chip management. I mean, five companies control about 70% of that market. Three out of five of them are American. One is a company called ASML over in uh, the Netherlands as well and one is a Japanese based company now the problem is if sanctions continue if there are continued tensions between the US and China it may be very difficult for SMIC to get their hands on this critical equipment and in terms of ASML this Dutch company it makes a machine which is very crucial for next generation chip making now there was a report last year from Reuters that the US government pressured the Netherlands government not to allow ASML to ship this machine to SMIC and still SMIC has not been able to get its hands on this critical tool. So I think that just highlights the, the, the difficulty here for SMIC is trying to get their hands on next generation equipment. China cannot necessarily produce this stuff either. And so <clears throat> for China, the difficulty in the short term, at least is going to be the geopolitical tension. And then in the long term, can it create the expertise and the industries required for it to be able to make this advanced chip making tools and equipment and effectively help facilitate the development of SMIC and other foundries as well.